What's up? Welcome back to the Micah Dixon podcast. I know it's been a while. It's not my fault. Blame my shooter because he just got busy and life be life. And we are back with episode two of season two. Woo! My tamarine is gone. It's gone. Okay, so we left off last time about my mother's passing. And I remember uh, when I closed the last episode, episode one, I was talking about the dreams I had that I won't say led up to her death, but the dreams I had before that had me thinking I was going to die. I just knew I was going to die. I knew I was going to die. I knew it didn't matter what. I didn't know how. But I knew I was going to die, right? So this past summer, uh, I guess around now, I said like um, perhaps like early June, I had a dream. And I'm big on dreams because I've always had lucid dreams. Uh, I believe, my belief is that dreams are not just dreams. They are trying to tell you something. They may be another... Um, multiverse connection is a spiritual thing but them dreams are not just dreams something is happening uh in the spiritual world while you sleep in your dream that's going to you know relay into the physical world that's what i believe so i'm big on dreams my mother always discerned my dreams for me she always you know had me sit and talk with her about the dream and she would tell me it means this it means that i'm big on dreams i've been a dream in my whole life with these unexplainable I can't explain these dreams but why do I have a bear in my vision and like it didn't make sense right so in knowing that when I had this one dream this past June of 2023 um I had woke up in a dream right and in the dream I'm in my bed I'm getting out the bed but it's my house but now it's like completely dark where in the next room is my son's room and in the doorway you see the TV blue light showing, but it's dark. And it's like all these little small like pieces of dust, like, or uh, the, what is it? Like not dust, but like the cotton, like falling, hanging and falling. And I'm like, where am I? But I knew I was at my house, but I wasn't at my house, but it was my house. And it was just black. And I turn and I see y'all, and I can't make this up because this is like scarred in my head. It's like etched into my like, I'm like not traumatized, but I low key was. Um, I see this shape. It's like a shape of like this disfigured um, like glob. It's floating and it has a face. It also has a feeling. It has a sad feeling. Mind you, you know, when you sleep and you dream, you don't talk with your mouth. It's your mind that's, that's speaking. And I felt it. And I was like, oh, it's sad. I'm like, why is it here? And why are we somewhere that's dark? And. I turn towards the door and I'm getting ready to walk to the next room to the light but then I end up waking up right that was in June and that was when I was like well what happened and I'm like why was I somewhere dark why was my house dark why was I in a dark place right and I don't let it freak me out too much but I was like okay Lord what was that because why was my house like in the upside down version of my house was like it was flipped to be something else that it just is not in the physical right so I let that dream pass it bothers me but it does not hang over my head too much mind you mommy is still alive um then the next coming up this is probably like August I think it was a week before she passed no so it was like September um another dream I have and this was the dream where I knew I was going to die. And I just was like, I'm cool with it. If I have to go, I'm going. And my son came and got me out the room. He's like, Mommy, I want to go downstairs, but it's dark. So mind you, I'm dreaming. And I'm back in this dark place again. And I'm like, OK, so I'll go for you. But in my dream, I'm not rem remembering I'm in a dark place. I'm just like, all right, I'll go downstairs for you. I go downstairs and it's dark. My house still looks the same like my house. It's the cotton things and the dust falling from the ceiling. And it's like very dark. And I look to the right of me. It's another figure, like a glob, but it's shit like a boy this time. He doesn't have like legs. He doesn't have arms. He has a head that he has a baseball cap on. 
and he's sad. And I'm like, why is he here? And why am I back in this place again? So I know now, even in a dream, I'm like, I'm back here at this place again, but why am I here again? And I felt a presence behind me. And I was like, oh, that's something bad. Mind you, your mouth don't move, but you thinking, your mind, your soul is like, is, is working, it's still, is, is woke. And I'm like, something behind me. And I was like, Jesus, this is the name I know to call when I get in trouble, right? And before I go further with the dream, um, I was raised in the church. I believe in God wholeheartedly, even more to this day. Uh, Father is a pastor, and I'm not into religion, so we are very clear. I'm into a relationship with Christ, Yeshua, Yahweh, Yahuwah. That's my belief. So we know my foundation is right there. We locked in like this, like best friends. So back to the dream. When I feel this presence behind me, I just knew it was something evil. All right, so I remember, again, in the dream, your mouth does not move. But at least while you're dreaming, you don't speak with your mouth. Your mouth is like, and in, in, in minds that are very lucid. My mind speaks, right? So I'm just like, Jesus. And I'm like, Jesus. And I'm like, Jesus, Jesus. And I'm like, Jesus. And I scream real loud. And this light shot out at me like, whew. It is like, and I woke up. But my chest was feeling like, like, I don't even know how to explain it. It was feeling like um, something had got snatched out of my chest. So I'm like, oh, I'm about to die. And I was like, even going to work, you know, freaking out. I'm going to be in a car accident. If I'm going to have a heart attack and I'm just freaking out. I'm just like, whoo. And then it got to the point where I told Wolfie, my friend, Wolfie, like, hey, I'm having this dream. And I'm, my teacher, I'm like, I'm having this dream. Like, something about to happen, right? Something about to happen. This, this is just, this is too much. Like, ain't no way my dream went from, like, you know how you have these dreams and they, they feel good or they're, like, positive or, like, like, you can't explain them, but they're not crazy. But I kept going to this dark place in my dream. And I'm like, I know that means perhaps death or hell or I just was like I know something about to happen to me and I just was staying even closer to God praying more living right as best I could because I'm like something about to go down I don't know what mind you a week later um the 14th of September here we go again right I'm getting ready to go to sleep and lay down and I feel like when I'm going to sleep, I felt like my spirit was being pulled out of me. And I just woke up. And I'm like, nope, don't sleep yet. Don't sleep yet. Just wait. Just wait. Stay up until you calm down and then go to bed. Because I felt me going back into that dark place. And I was like, and I'm cool. The next night, the 15th of September, that Friday night, my mother had passed. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, did she go in my place? Like, because I just knew for a fact I was the one that was supposed to die. Like, I was the one having these awful dreams. And what made it so crazy was that I wasn't even telling my mom about, about my dreams. I, I could figure it out for myself now. And usually she just discerns my dreams. But I knew for myself, I'm like, this, is mean, this means death. Or this means hell. Or this is, like, where I shouldn't go. This is a dark place. And the souls that I seen was, was sad. Because now I'm like, oh, them had to be souls because they were shaped unlike humans. But I felt their energy being like, I don't know, I shouldn't be here. And I just felt so, and I'm like, did she go in my place? Because why was I having these dreams, right? Like, and I still to this day have very lucid dreams. Like, and I know they always mean something. Like, dreams mean something. And you may not be able to have your finger put on it the next morning. Or perhaps you can, but... Don't ignore your dreams. They're trying to tell you something. Because st I still haven't fully, you know, did, did it mean she was going to die? Did she go in my place? Did it mean I was being reborn to a new person? Because, mind you, in the end of that dream, I had light snatched up out of me. Or perhaps I became new and was reborn. So I'm still like, Lord, I cannot forget that place. Because whatever presence was coming for me was, like, about to grab me and probably hold me. I don't know. But it's like, what if I did not know to call his name? And it's, and I, it's still the the, um, the people that say, his name is Yeshua. It's not Jesus. But it's like, when I needed to get out of that place, I called the name of Jesus. And I'm not being religious. I'm being honest. 
this is my life. This is this is this was was it's still stuck in it's like burned into my skull or in my mind because I remember being in that dark place, like and I called Jesus. That's who got me out of that place. Like and then the next week my mother my mother passed away. It was like, whoa, like I don't even know what's going on with life, but let me just be still for a second and figure things out because that was crazy. Like that was just I'm still I'm I'm way more comfortable now than I was, you know, then. And I for me personally, I feel like that dream was me in a sense being reborn and before she passed that Thursday night, she died Friday night. So Thursday night, I felt like that was me taking her place. Me laying down and it feeling like my spirit was leaving was her, you know, me taking her place. Uh, me interceding her is what I felt like. I, this is me. And then I felt like the dream was me being reborn to a new person because I had to still lose a lot of who I once was to become the better version of myself for me and for all my children. Um, even for my next season in life, my next work in life, I'm still becoming um, the better version of myself. Still losing the old Micah for the new Micah. And I have no problem with losing the old Micah and her ways, her habits, old way of speaking, old way of thinking, old way of dressing, old way of living. I have no problem letting that part of me go. And I feel like that dream, I, I hope it is it, it's for that reason, right? Because I don't want to die young. I have no issue, but I know if I do go... Um, that my works, um, at least most recently, line up with, with Christ's word, and I am living under the grace of God. So I truly wholeheartedly believe that. And I told Wolf, I was like, yo, I know we're supposed to be calling him Yeshua, and I'm cool with that, but I don't mind calling him Jesus because when I was in that dark place, that's who I called to get me out. So like I was saying, I had to um, take care of something, but sleep is the cousin of death because... I know many people don't believe in anything. Like, I, I understand it. I, I low-key respect it. I wish I could be normal to where my dreams wasn't so crazy. I wish I could just, like, go back to sleep. But having to be woke in this, this system that I know we programmed in, like, look how we've been eating our food. Like, that's another conversation. But, like, your dreams are trying to tell you something. And so my, what I do now is when I have a dream that I just like it's too much to explain, I write it down and I sit and I meditate on it to find out like, what does this mean for my life? Cause it's saying something. You don't just dream because, oh, this was a dream in this. No, we are not just these regular humans. We have a whole spirit and a soul that we need to start figuring out what's really going on. Because one thing I understand about being a human is that you were born to die. And one day you have to hit that death date. And the biggest question is, when is your death date, right? We are not born with a birth certificate that comes with a birth date and a death date. But what if we were? What if you knew when you was going to die? You would live a whole different life if you knew that much. Like, oh, I'm dying in 10 years, so I need to go hard now. Not 50 years. Like, so... And saying that, my dreams, they didn't say my mother was going to pass. They didn't say that, but they were saying something. Because I've never had a dream like that before. And I, I hope I never go back to that dark place, ever. Unless I'm going with a sword, like, who was here trying to get, what's up? Because it was just that scary. And I never forget my chest, how it felt. Like, it was like, it felt like something was sucked out of me, like this. That's how I felt like it was like this. It was like, I don't even know what was going on, but y'all, when we when we dream, we be traveling places to other different, I guess, I'm going to call them multiverses, I don't know, but we be traveling when you sleep. When you sleep, you come closer to death than you think. Like, people die in their sleep all the time. It's not uncommon. Um, so when you have a dream and you are a person that has lucid dreams, you need to seek God to help have them help you look further into that because that's what gives me comfort, stability, grace, and strength to keep going forward because, yo, mommy passing and me still having to raise my kids and my sister kids and still being able to be like, hey, y'all, which that was fake, of course, we know that. 
But in saying that, it's like, we not just human beings. We have to die one day and go somewhere. You could believe it or not. Oh, I'm going to come back or I'm going to just be and I'm just going to and I'm just going to be. No, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. And this is from experience. I didn't read a book to tell you this. I, this is my life. I have to live this. Like, I can't have that vision. It won't, it won't leave me. If I try to, you know, escape it, it that's my, my focus. Not focus, but that's what keeps me from being such a bad person to other people. Not that I was always bad, but now I even obey God's commandments way more because that dark place, I don't know how them other souls that was in there got there, but I'm not going to it. Nope. I am not going to it. Um, and so in saying that, that's a wrap for this episode. Um, but I encourage you to write down your dreams. I encourage you to seek God daily and whatever obstacle or problems you may have going on because we all going through something right now. As far as trials and tribulations go, we all being tested, tried, perhaps pushed a bit too much, dried out, heartbroken. And we all need to have that one big comforter, you know, come and give us some love, some smiles, a hug and encouragement. And I get my help from the most high uh, Yahweh. That's who I call on for all things. That's who gets me through the toughest of times of being overwhelmed and stressed out or depressed. Um, It's time we get out of being defeated as a people, as an individual. It's time to, to look defeat in the face and say, you can't, you a lie. I got victory every day I wake up. We got victory, and you could have that, but you can't have your trust in self. And I don't even know where I'm going left with this, but it's like you can't have your trust in just yourself because I promise you it's not Micah, it's not myself that gets me through my days. Like I'm carrying more weight than you could see on this camera. Like I'm carrying a lot. You don't see it, and I don't even say all of it, but... I'm not carrying it by myself. I have help. And my help is not a physical man. I know. I wish I had my husband. Come on, hurry up and marry me so I can stop. I need a companion when God sent him. He has to be God sent, God fearing, Holy Ghost filled because, yeah, I need that. But until he arrives, my help comes from the Lord. It comes from the Most High. I open my Bible. I don't read it. As a religious book, it is the instructions to have a happy whole life on this earth and to prepare for what's, what comes next. And um, I find comfort in that, man. I find comfort in knowing who God is, that he, he holds me together because I promise you, I should have lost my mind when my mother passed away, just random out the blue. I should have went crazy, like, what? Like, where is she and how and how come and why and this and this? But, I, but it was like, Okay, Lord, what do you or what are you trying to say or have me shift and do by allowing this to happen? Because all things are by his creation. It couldn't have happened without him saying, okay, her time is up, right? He is the the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end and the sayer of all things. He has to give the, the right for it to even happen. So I was like, okay, that's your will. I allow your will to be done. But in her passing, now what is, what do you require of me? Now what do you want from me? Now how do I serve you? My whole life has shifted from one way to someone I'm becoming that's completely different from who I, who I once was. If you know, you know. If you know how much I party and kicked it in the streets and was a gangster, and now I'm talking about God, like, all the time, but I'm still me and funny, you will understand what I'm saying. Like, I had to, I'm still shifting into this other person. And I'm allowing for God to speak to me to my, through my dreams through visions, through other people, through watching for the signs that he showed me, uh, through opening up his word and him being like, read that scripture. And I'm like, okay. All right, I hear you. Like, why are you so loud? Like, all right, because, y'all, I wish I could just show y'all how good God is. Because when you're going to have them times of despair where you're like, I just can't do it no more. I quit. It's too much. You're going to have them times because you are human. And as much as we do have a spirit, and our souls, our mind, right? A lot of times we don't operate in our spirit. We operate in our flesh. A lot of us don't even know that we have a spirit that we can lean on, the Holy Spirit, if you have it, and, and call on that gives you hope. It, it gives you grace and favor. So you're going to have the moments where you need to call on somebody. And my mother can't answer that phone no more. 
and I understood that she was my shepherd from the time she was here, but she was not mine to keep. She always belonged to him, and she had to go back to him. So we all on borrowed time. We have to give it up one day. But when you need to make that phone call and call on somebody and ain't nobody answering in the physical, you better know how to hit them knees and pray and talk to him because that's who's going to hear you. He'll hear the cause of the righteous and the repentive heart. So I'll pause it right there um, for this episode, and we'll get back to um, episode three. May have a guest on, may not, but I will say God is so good, and I wish you could taste him and know him for yourself because if you know, you know. If you don't, you need to learn and know now because he is just that good. So um, the Micah Dixon podcast, wrap it up right here until episode three. Be amazing. Be great. And this year of 2024, put God first in everything and watch your life turn around and change like this. Peace. Black chairs, wild baby.